Hey, this is Jerry Q. Perry's, and I am the author of this great book, The Making of a Blended Family. I have had the opportunity to do an interview with Brian Mathia on Confessions, and we talked about several things of how you can take a blended family and make it work. Blended families are hard, they are challenging, but this interview is going to help you to do the necessary things to make your family more secure, more loving, and more enjoyable. Watch this. I hope you're blessed. Peace, everybody. Confessions. Peace, everybody. Confessions. Peace, everybody. Confessions. You are listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bethea on 102 Jam. Everybody, again, you're listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bethea on WJHM102Jams.com. Listen, we got a dope, dope show in the building. Um, I got to say, man, you know, it's, it's going to be great. I suggest please tune in, share this with your family, with your friends or what have you. For those of y'all that are going through marital issues or have had marital issues and you're looking to fix some of your problems or at least advice on, you know, how you can get your problems fixed, uh, we got a special, special guest with one of God's special uh, children, you know, who's definitely blessed and highly favored, as he always says, you know, so definitely um, uh, we're talking about marriages and blended families and children and all that nature today. Uh, please welcome to the show, Mr. Pastor Jerry Q. Paris. How are you, sir? I am fantastic, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thank Good. you very much for uh, coming down to do uh, my podcast with me. I'm honored. I'm honored. Absolutely. Now, he is the author of the book called Making, The Making of a Blended Family, The New Norm for the Traditional Family. And I want to first start with my first question was, um, what inspired you to go ahead and write the book? Uh, what inspired me was my own blended family. Um, me and my wife uh, came together. I had two children from a previous marriage. She had two children from a previous marriage. And we came together. I like to say uh, it was not two people coming together, but two histories colliding. Mm. And um, there was not any information of how to blend those families together. And uh, we didn't even know it was called blended families. And, and uh, we had a lot of challenges um, when we first came together. Um, there were some things that uh, her children, um, uh, she has a daughter, uh, Jamise, that was incredible. She has a son, Ryan. I had a son, Jason, two sons, Jason and Justin. And there was a lot of dynamics by us just coming together. Before one word was spoken, mm -hmm. there were some dynamics that came into play that uh, if you're not aware of those dynamics, it, 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 it could be a uh, challenge uh, for a marriage at the very beginning. While you're standing in front of the preacher, challenges are already taking place. Uh, that girl that's in that, that daughter has a daddy's heart. So mm -hmm. she is already connected to her father. So therefore she feels that she is um, possibly betraying him by loving you. Mm. And so even at the very beginning, she, depending on how young they are, uh, she has to navigate through that uh, with her own personal uh, biological father right. before she can release any love to you. And if you don't know that coming in, you're thinking that this girl got a horrible attitude, you know, mm. but it's not that she's protecting her spot in her heart for her father. Okay. Now, I, listen, I happened to listen to a show earlier today, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up that point. I wanted to ask you um, a question in regards to this. Um, for a man specifically, well, it can, it can either work both, either way, uh, but let's say from a man um, specifically, if a woman does not have her father in her life, how hard of a dynamic is that to get past if you're a man trying to date someone's daughter and she may not have known like her father and didn't really necessarily have that father figure in her life? Wow, that's a good question. My, my wife actually said to me after we had gotten married and, and we had been together for a while that she did not realize that the absence of her father was a huge uh, uh, difference for our marriage because uh, she only saw her mother as the road model. She mm. didn't see uh, the father figure in the house. So it's hard to know how to love a man when you've never seen it modeled in front of you. 
Um, and so um, here's an example. When I was growing up, my aunt, my aunt and hus- my aunt and her husband was very, you know, traditional family. Mm-hmm. So when we used to go, my, mu- my, my aunt used to cook dinner for her husband while he was gone to work. When he came back, the children was not allowed to touch anything until daddy ate, you know. And so, but when I got married and I uh, start uh, thinking that my wife was going to cook dinner, and by the time I got home, all the kids had eaten, I was eating the leftovers that was left. I had an attitude because I was thinking that daddy was supposed to eat first. Uh-huh. Um, and, and daddy didn't eat first because everybody else ate first because, again, that was not model. I'm not saying that's the only way. Right. I'm saying that's a model that was in front of me that I expected to see and expected to have when I got married, and it was not the case. So sometimes when a woman does not have it modeled in front of her, she does not know what it takes to take care of a man. And I'm not saying that's every woman before you all, you know, blast <laughs> us. Um, but it is a part that if it haven't been modeled in front of you, you do not know necessarily how to do it. Okay, now does that work vice versa towards a man? If a, if he, if a woman has a, a man that, which I know is not usually the norm, uh, but if a woman is looking at a man that she likes and he never had a mother figure or her mother in his life, uh, do, you know, do you know or do you feel that like that can be the same? Way? Absolutely. It, 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 it goes both ways, um, um, depending upon how your mother is. If, if, if you had a mother that's out of the house all the time, mm-hmm. you know, and working and is not doing things, not a mother around the house, you know, a home, a home mother. Um, um, you see, you see a woman's position in the house differently, you know, and, and so it works both ways. You only can do what's been modeled in front of you or what has been the example. Uh, there's three ways that a person gains information. They gain information from their parents. If Mm you're, if your mother liked greens, nine times out of 10, you like greens. If she hate okra, you like hate okra. Uh, if, uh, you also learn it from your experience. Um, if, if, if you experience something, then that information comes down and then you learn it from your environment. So if you have your family, a bad family, bad experiences, bad environment, you're going to make bad choices. Okay. Now, another question I definitely wanted to get into, and, and a lot of people don't know, and like you said, they don't know what exactly a blended family is. But So can you ex- please explain to the audience what, a, what exactly is a blended family? Well, in the 70s, I write in the book, uh, what is a blended family? There's a story of a lovely lady who had three children of her own. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they were all living together, yet they were all alone till this one day when this woman met this fellow. Oh. You know, <laughs> it's called the Brady Bunch. It's, it, it's when uh, you have children on one hand and another person has children, uh, the man has children, and you all come to become one family. You're blending that family together. That's a blended family. And it could also be that... Uh, a man cannot have any children, but a woman can have children. Mm-hmm. Or it could be a woman have no children, but the man have children. If right. there's children involved in your life before you say, I do, you mm-hmm. are in a blended family. Okay. Now, if you don't mind me asking, I want to start with the, um, I understand that, of course, you're, you're, how long have you been currently married to your current wife? I've been married to my current wife over 23 years now. Okay. And I understand that you were married previously. I was married previously, yes. Okay. Now, if you don't mind me asking, what, uh, what led to, if you don't mind me asking, what led to that, that first marriage not working out? In maturity, um, I got married when I was 18 years old. I got married when I was 18 years old because I came from a broken home. My family divorced. My mom divorced when I was uh, 13, and my mom and dad did, and they left and went the separate ways. And... And when they did, I end up kind of raising myself. I talk about this in, in my book a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, and so at 18 years old, um, I'm out on my own, and, and, and I probably uh, got married um, because I, I just didn't know what else to do. I didn't have any, any uh, role models in front of me at that time. I had them in church, mm-hmm. but, I mean, it, you're in church for, what, two hours, you know, Roughly, so right. three hours a week or whatever. Um, so I did not get an opportunity to uh, be in, uh, or be with them um, to guide me in the in those early stages of my life. Okay. And so from then, when I got married at 18 years old, mm-hmm. um, and things start happening, and 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 you know, uh, I, I didn't have the proper uh, counsel uh, to work it out. Okay. So if you don't mind me asking again, what what led 
to that final breaking point where it's just like, this is not going to go out. This is not going to work out. I need to go ahead and move forward with. Well, we, we, we had such a, a bad communication, didn't know how to communicate. We didn't, we, you know, finances, you know, we were young, you know, work, finances, dollars, money. And I remember uh, sharing with my wife at the time that we needed to go see, con- seek counseling. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she refused to seek counseling. And I said at that moment that if we didn't get counseling, then I couldn't stay in the marriage. And, and then we broke apart. Um, and after we broke apart, then other things start happening outside of us breaking apart because right. we're young and all of the above. And so what we really separated from wasn't really the reason why we got divorced it was the other things that happened after we separated gotcha. that that made it more difficult to get back together okay and um in regards to that how difficult was that process especially with children involved how, how was it going through that process of getting divorced and explaining to uh you know your, your, your children that all right this is what mommy and i are going to do how was that process devastating okay. devastating i think divorce is one of the most devastating things that happen to our children although when our children are in it they don't realize it right um um, while we're going through the process they feel they're okay um but we are still seeing uh residual effects from our children we believe that was a result of our divorce um uh the result of my mother and dad's divorce Uh, i i i was i had a lot of insecurity Mm-hmm. Um, um, I wanted people to like me. I wanted it was it was it was, but all of that came from the divorce. Right. Um, and in fact, me and my wife both said we both agreed that if we could have gone back, and we have an incredible marriage. We love each other. We enjoy being with each other. But we said if we could go back, we would not do the divorce. We would stick it out until our children was born. Mm-hmm. Now, I want or, to, or not born, but grown. Gotcha. <laughs> now, you kind of dispelled the myth, and I want you uh, to delve just a little bit deeper into that because there's this myth that we as men don't feel or don't have any emotion that compared to women. Um, so, you know, in regards to that, from a firsthand experience, from a firsthand experience, you could definitely say, and forgive me if I'm wrong for anybody out there, you could definitely say that it's as emotional heavy on us as men as it is for a woman. Would that be correct? Well, I could say it was emotionally heavy on me. <laughs> I can't speak for every man, but um, um, it was, you know, when the Bible talks about uh, the two, two becoming one flesh, mm-hmm. um, that's what happens in marriage, the two becomes one flesh. When you get a divorce, it's the tearing away of the flesh. And when you tear away the flesh, that hurts. That's very difficult. That's not um, an easy, it took, it took easily, uh, I would say two years to be able to function in, in, a, in, a, in, a, right, in a proper way for me after getting a divorce. Okay, and let me ask um, briefly real quick, uh, is there, in terms of time frame, is there like a time frame that you feel specifically or is it on a case by case basis where you feel like, OK, the divorce is final. Now I can go back and start dating again. I I adamantly say that uh, you need to give yourself at least a year mm-hmm. and uh, to start dating. You should not get married at least for two years. I I thoroughly believe that um, you cannot emotionally bounce back. Right from a relationship that is a true relationship in six months or two months. My opinion, I know there's people that do and say that's fine, but to, you know, those are bounce backs to me. You need time to, you need time to heal. All right. And again, y'all, we'll be right back with more with Pastor Jerry Q. Perry's on WJHM102Jams.com.
Senior back with Confessions with Brian T. Bethea on WJHM102Jams.com. Um, before we go any further, just want to remember, make sure y'all download the app in case you have an Android. Download the app, the WJHM102Jams.com app if you have an Android phone so you can download and listen to all of our shows and uh, just make sure that you go ahead and do that. Sorry, Apple users, we don't have the app for y'all just yet. Complain to your subscriber. Hopefully they'll get us and let us uh, go ahead and do that. So, But anyway, we are back here with Pastor Jerry Q. Parries, who is the author of The Making of a Blended Family, as well as the pastor of Christian Family Worship Center here in Orlando, Florida. Um, yes. Thank you again, sir, again. So thank you. We want to start off with the second part here with Choose a Partner Wisely. How do we choose a partner wisely? Wow, that's a great. That, in fact, that's probably one of my favorite chapters in the book is how to choose a partner to blend your family with or how to find the right partner to marry. Um, one of the things you can do is uh, that I talk about in the, in the first chapter in choosing a partner is that you can pay attention, take a listen or listen or, or look with your eyes open. For an example, um, if you go out to dinner mm -hmm. with, with somebody and you're dating them, you know, you want to see how they respond to the uh, waitress. You want to see how they how they tip, or or you want to see. Uh, um, you just want to pay attention. Uh, people teach. Uh, people show you who they are by showing you how they treat others, not how they treat you. Right. And if you can look at how they treat the waitress, how they treat the valet person, uh, when somebody called on the cell phone uh, mm -hmm. in the car, just watch and see how they answer the phone. If they answer the phone, and then when they finish, they throw the phone down and say something negative. Right. That's the kind of person that you're marrying. If they, if they respect their mother, look how they respect their mother for men. If, if you find a man that really loves his mother and respects his mother, that's an indication. That's not a, a hundred percent proof. Right. But if he if he's nasty and dogs out his own mother, then the likelihood he's going to respect you is 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 not going to happen. And last but not least, um, you know, if someone has children and they're not if a man has children and he's not taking care of the children that he have right now. Mm -hmm. What make you think he's going to take care of the child that he has with you? You know, so you can look at things that are around or if a woman uh, have her kids over her mother's house and you go pick her up and every time you turn around, the kids are at my mother's house. Then th that says something about the kind of person that you're getting ready to marry. So you got to pay attention to the surroundings around you about a person and not pay attention to how they treat you. But look at how they treat others and how they treat others tell you the kind of person that you have. I have heard that saying before. And uh, specifically speaking, I happen to be watching the video. I'm not sure. Are you familiar with Dr. Boyce uh, Watkins? I'm not. Okay. Um, I follow Dr. Boyce Watkins on uh, YouTube and Facebook and things of that nature. And he preaches a lot about, um, not necessarily preaches, but he has a lot with financial literacy mm -hmm. uh, and doing some other social topics and things of that nature. And But he happened to talk about, uh, he had a video that's on YouTube right now. It's about 27 minutes long. And it's, uh, it's in regards for women are um, women choosing the men that they date, you know what I'm saying, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, Women choose basically make bad choices in men. That's why they end up with the men that they're with. Mm -hmm. Now you have to watch the video. Don't take my word wholeheartedly specifically. Yeah. Not down to all women, uh, but he did bring up a, a couple of examples where there was a few. Uh, one guy that he was friends with uh, was from a single parent household. Mm -hmm. His father wasn't around, and, but his mother was a nurturer, but wasn't necessarily a disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever he did things that were wrong. Uh, she would end up nurturing him instead of scolding him when he needed to be scolded, and you know when the father figure wasn't around. Right. Um, so I know that's that's, and in turn, what he ended up doing, like say, like he brought him an example. Maybe um, his, his friend would he just drop cookies all over the floor, didn't clean them after right, himself right. or what have you, and his mother would just like, oh, that's okay or what have you, you know. But you know he would end up, hey, ma, we're out of cookies instead of you know screaming at him like right. we're all out of cookies and things of that nature. And he ended up treating the woman that he was with the same way. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's, it's hard. What, you know, what can we do? Uh, is there anything that we can do or, you know, in regards to helping a person like that? Or should we just steer away clearly? Because I know yeah, some people have that I, save, I can save yeah, somebody syndrome. I'm, I'm, I'm not in helping. I'm not in the helping mode of, of finding a mate. Um, when you, uh, women marry men thinking that they can change them. Women 
marry men marry women thinking that they'll never change and both of them are, are, are absolutely wrong if you have to fix somebody to marry you and you, you know yeah I'm, when i get married to him i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna dress him up he's good but he don't know how to dress so i'm gonna dress him up you know you know i'm gonna I'm do this and then man you know uh the woman is always you know when you first meet them they they throwing you the best parties you know right. best love and you get married and all of that all of a sudden i thought you would never change no people change and people stay the same they are who they are and when, and and my angelou say when a person shows you who they yeah, are believe them, them. Yep. and and we have a tendency to, to when we're in love and and we got our eyes on and we want something we have a tendency to miss all the red flags it's not that the red flags are not there mm -hmm. you have a tendency to say you know pay don't pay attention to them and you got to pay attention because people will show you who they are uh, you walk in a woman's house and go go hang out with somebody and you walk in the house and, and come by by surprise and, and, and the house is not neat, then you're marrying somebody who don't clean house, you right. know, and you can't expect that to change. Or you get a guy that every time you turn around, he's looking for a job and don't have a job. You marry somebody that don't work, you know, and you and you you got to. That when I oh when I get married to him, I'm gonna make sure he gets a job. If he ain't got a job when you marry him, then you know you gotta wait till he get a job. Wait till he becomes the man that you want him to be, right. and not marry somebody who you're trying to make him into something that he's not. Well, and now I've often questioned. This is one of the questions I've always wondered, especially when you have, um, let's take you know, say Mama for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, great mother, of course. Uh, you know, what I'm saying wonderful woman, and. I know, you know, raising, raising boys such as uh, Ryan and, and, and Jason or, or and Justin or what have you, you know, she, you know, mo helped to mold them and shape them in the way that they uh, should be as responsible adults. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when they, and I'm not saying this actually happened to them, I'm just saying, I'm just using them as an example. Okay. Uh, what happens is, you know, sometimes, you know, you have that, you have a man that had a great mother that molded them correctly to respect women to, you know, talk like this, act like this or what have you, and then they want, they run into that one woman that they want but it's like the woman that they want wants to mold them or take them like a clay, like a piece of clay, and then mold them to the way that they want. Can that be a bit of an issue? Because, you know, even if that is, even if they are a good man in that regard? Well, it, 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 it happens in all of our lives that, that um, one of the things that it's not what you, how you raise a child. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's how that child interpret that which you've raised them. Right. Um, and so you can raise a child to do the right thing, but if their interpretation of that is different than what you've raised them, they could turn out to be totally different than, you know. Uh, all of my children do things differently than I would do in some, in some cases. You know, they say, well, where did you guys learn that from? You know, that I, you've never seen me do that. you never see me. Um, but, but people have a tendency to not only pick up things from you, but they pick up things from uh, their biological parents and they pick up things from, uh, um, um, their surroundings and social, uh, life. So I think I'm answering your question that you can have somebody that date your daughter and end up seeing your daughter accept things that you would have never accepted right. and wonder how in the world are you living like this? And it is because for somewhere down the road, um, she believed that she wasn't worthy of that which you've taught her. Gotcha, gotcha. And it, and it can happen to anybody. That's, that's just that's life. Okay. And I want to um, move on to uh, understanding family dynamics. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you talk more about that? I know in terms of family dynamics, I know there's, there's issues sometimes with um, communication in terms, and especially... Uh, you know, especially when it comes to like holidays, mm -hmm. uh, I know I've had that issue um, myself. Uh, you know, learning you know where I'm going to spend holidays or learning where the kids are going to spend holidays, right. things of that nature. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, the dynamics is what I talked about at the very beginning. Is that when you come into a relationship and a person has children, um, um, the dynamics is let's say for instance you meet a woman and she has two kids mm -hmm. by two different men. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you look at the dynamics of that, you have to look at now not, not only do I have to deal with her, but now I have to deal with the father of these children. Because when you marry that person, you're not just marrying them, you're marrying everything that's attached to them. So not only are you marrying 
uh, you have to deal with the fathers that are connected to the child. You now have to deal with the grandmothers that are ch connected to the father. Right. You have to deal with the aunties that is connected to each child. So those are the dyna dynamics. Um, and same thing with the, with the uh, husband, if he has children. You know, mm -hmm. you, a man may have four different children by four different women. You got to deal with all of those dynamics and all of those. So you, before you get involved with the person, you need to have conversation about who are you, where you been, who are you, who you been with, in the sense of how many children you have. Are, are there mothers involved? Are there fathers involved? Are there grandmothers involved? Right. Because sometimes at the end of the day, during Christmas time, uh, they may take their grandchild and leave the other two children at the house, you know? And so they, that, that one grandson comes home with 20 gifts. And, and the children at home, uh, because you can't afford it, may only have two gifts. Right. So now you got a child here that got 20 gifts, waving it in front of the kids that only have two. You know, um, it, it gets crazy, it, the dynamics of that. So I talk about in the book understanding the dynamics and how to walk through that, knowing that a girl is a daddy. All girls are mostly daddy girls. And all boys are mama boys. So when you run into that, that situation, you got to look at the dynamics and know how to navigate through that. Okay. So specifically speaking in regards to like holidays, how do you, or how did you specifically, how did you navigate, okay, this is what we're doing with the children and blend, you know, and also adding like their biological parents and getting them involved to make sure everything was okay because that's what they were used to. Wow, that's a good question. And uh, when I first met my wife, Eunice, um, her her fa her children's father, biological dad, was very very involved in their lives. So every Christmas morning, he would come over to open up gifts with his children. And when he came over to open up gifts with his children, I would give them space for them to do that. This is me. I know when I say this, people are, what what yeah. <laughs> no, I gave him space. I moved. I went into the other room. Because he had bought his children's gift. These was a, this was a tradition for his children. And I felt that his children should not have been punished because their mom and dad got a divorce that they would lose out on having that time with their father on Christmas morning. Right. So they opened their gifts during Christmas morning. My children, uh, when we all lived together, after a while we just all start opening up gifts together. And he was there, I was there. But his his dad, their dad was always welcome at that time um, to be a part of that. So what I did is I made room for my children's father at our table because he was important for their life. Gotcha. And I wanted to make sure that they did not miss out on that because of the mistake his mother, their mother and their father made. That was my decision, right. and uh, it worked well for our family. Okay. Yeah, worked well for our family. To the point that, that, that my, anybody that heard me talk, that my, um, my wife's ex-husband, when he came, comes to Orlando, lives in Florida, used to, when his kids was there, could stay at our house because I wanted his kids to always have their father in their lives, and I did not want. And my ex-wife could come and stay at our house at the, at the same time. My wife, we understood the, 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 the power to make sure that our children did not miss out because of our mistakes. That's maturity. That doesn't happen for everybody. Right. But everybody should press to make sure that they do not uh, cause their children to miss out on their biological parents, grandmother, uh, because the children are not at fault. You have to, you have to be you know, mature enough to handle that. Now, and, and, not, and I'm glad you said that because I know not a lot of people are mature enough to, to handle that particular part of it. You know, so what do you tell, what would you tell, what do you think should, you, you could tell somebody who has that specific dynamic, you know, and they're just, they're not sure, um, you know, if they could let the ex-mate of the, of their current person stay over? Well, I, again, I'm not, that's not for everybody. Right. Just, just so happened that um, my wife's, uh, my, my, my children's dad um, was mature. He, he didn't come in. You know, he respected my home and, you know, and all of the things that come along with that. Um, the thing that I will share is to remember that your children did not deserve to lose their father or they lose to lose their mother. Right. And it is it is your responsibility to do everything that you can 
to, to make sure that they do not lose out on that relationship. And so if you have to eat crow and you got to, you know, suck it up, mm -hmm. then and we've done that many days, do what you got to do to make it happen. All right. And we'll be right back on WJHM102Jams.com. Back again, family. Again, you are listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bethia on WJHM 102 Jams. Again, we are back with our guest, our special guest in the building, of course, the author of The Making of a Blended Family and pastor of Christian Family Worship Center, uh, Mr. J uh, Jerry Q. Perry. Welcome back again. Thank you. Glad to be here, man. Okay. And again, we've been talking about blended families and, uh, of course, The Making of a Blended Family for those of y'all that... Uh, have are dealing with um, marrying somebody that ha already has children and things of that nature. We talked quite a lot. One thing that really caught me off, um, not really caught me off guard, I shouldn't say that, but one, really that, one chapter that really caught me, uh, caught my, my, my um, attention was Cinderella Syndrome. Uh, can you explain what Cinderella Syndrome is? Yeah, Cinderella, uh, Cinderella Syndrome is a story about Cinderella. Cinderella is the stepchild, you know. And sometimes in a blended family, um, we can make uh, the stepchildren for, we don't call them stepchildren, by the way, in blended families. Right. We call them bonus kids, a bonus child. Um, a stepchild has such, to me, a, a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. So I use the word bon my bonus son. My, so when someone says, well, who is this? And I'm introducing them, I would say, right. uh, first of all, I say it's my child. I don't even use bonus. That, that is my child. And then in the event that I have to clarify it, I'm at the Social Security office or whatever, right. then I say, this is my bonus child. This is my uh, bonus child. Um, but in the C Cinderella syndrome, um, when you don't have your own biological children, mm -hmm. you have a tendency to be harder on your bonus children than you are on your biological children. Right. You let your biological children go to bed without washing the dishes, but you make the Cinderella child scrub the floor, clean the kitchen, clean the, clean the, the, the bathroom, <laughs> and, and, and then they begin to have a resentment for you, the bonus parent, because they can tell that you are you have a difference in the way that you treat me versus you treat yeah. your own biological child right. um problem in our in our in our blended family growing up and 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 those residual moments have a tendency to flood over into adulthood and again a lot of times it is not how you treat the child it's the perception of how the child feels you treat them Gotcha. And you can do something and be fair across the board, but if their perception is that you have not been fair, then it comes back that that, that becomes damaging for them. So you got to make sure, and one of the ways that I talk about in the Cinderella Syndrome, one of the ways to, to make sure that you don't have this problem is to put up a schedule in the, in the kitchen to say, on Monday, John does the dishes. On Tuesday, Ray does the dishes. On Wednesday... Sarah does the dishes, and when people could see in writing that it is even across the board, that takes away the perception that I'm being mistreated, and they're getting away with this, and I'm not getting away with that. Oh, I like that. I like that. Um, how how difficult was that in your particular household, getting them getting them to understand that, or was it not that difficult at all? Oh, very difficult. Very challenging. When you have children from different parents, it is, it is a dynamic that's automatically there. Um, biological children go to their biological parent to plead their case. One of the things that we did to help our children is that I w we, would, we would try, uh, you know, after later, 
that if, if, my, if my bonus daughter wanted something and her mother said no, I would go back and talk to her mother and allow me to come out and give her what she wants so that it would make her know that I was an advocate for her. Gotcha. Instead of me being the person that said no, 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 because because when your biological uh, your bonus children come to you and it's uh, ten o'clock at night, hey, can I have a fruit snack? No, go to bed. You know, yeah, yeah, go to bed. You know, don't. No, you can't have one. But then your your biological son come and say, hey, mom, I want a fruit snack. Well, hey, you can have one. And when your bonus child see you do that, mm-hmm. you got problems. And so we try to had to try to figure out a way. Uh, to make sure that we made it even across the board. Okay, was that something that you had to literally sit them sit them down and talk with them that, or was that, or that something that you just had to just take practice in order to get them to to see that? We had to do both. We had to do both. We had to talk. We had to sit them down. We had to share. Uh, we had to do it. We just kept doing it over and over again. And and again, like I said, some of that even passes over. Uh, for some of them, even today. Mm, okay. Now, in regards, you know, excuse me, in regards to that, I know you talked about uh, in the book in, jo- in terms of joining the family together, and I remember there was a, a specific situation. Um, you know, how do you deal with those where those family members who bring repeated people or people that they dated into the family, and you know, how, making sure that di- that dynamic works as well. If you know, if you know what I'm saying, like. Maybe if they if uh, one marriage didn't work, then they uh, they brought in another the next wife, uh, right? You know that type of thing. Is that right? Right. Um, yeah. I, I I talked about that 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 sometime, and this is for the 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 spouse, or um, if if I, if I bring my wife around my family, mm-hmm. if I bring my wife around my family, and I've had four other girlfriends prior to bringing my wife around my family then my family may not receive my wife very well because they would see her as just another person I'm bringing around and she'll be gone in the next few minutes. Right. And so some families or some women, uh, uh, my wife would be offended that my family did not receive her, but it has nothing to do with my wife. It has everything to do with my choices. And so they in return feel the negativity of the choices that I made. Right. And, and so I encourage women not to, uh, when those things happen, don't take it personally. It's not against you. It's really about the mate who you are with that, that the, um, uh, the discussion or the, you know, the, the, the thing is about. Is it also an aspect sometimes, because I know a lot of times with in-laws, you know, sometimes the biological family can have a, um, a favorite so to speak, you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, well, oh, oh, that, that, yeah, because when you bring somebody into my home mm-hmm. and I gain a relationship with them, right. when you mess up with them doesn't mean that I still don't have a relationship <laughs> with them. Right. And then sometimes they want you to cut the relationship because they cut the relationship. Then they bring a new person in and expect you to forsake the person that you've gained a relationship with and with the child. And it, it's, Welcome to the blended family. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's tough for, um, for for a lot of people, but I know you said you talked about that in the book yes. a little bit. You know, you know, it's kind of hard to deal with um, things where you know the, the the family has already gotten used to you know those particular um, you know that particular family member, and they love that particular. I know my family is the same way. Absolutely. Um, you know where you know we got used to not just used to them, but we actually loved and loved on the. You know, the family member, the, the in-law, what have you, and in a lot of in a lot of cases, my family is like that. The biological family member died, but that in-law family member stayed family till death did they part as well. Yes. Uh, so, and I know that can sometimes play a a family dynamic um, also. Uh, is there has, were there any cases or how? Not well, if you can give an example, if you have one on on your end, uh, but specifically, how can you? What, what about the issue where the child or the children try to play one parent against the other? You know what I'm saying? Especially whether it be uh, the bonus parent and the, the, um, the, you know, and one of the biological parents in that regard. Or, I mean, or either it could be the case where the, you know, they live with the biological parent and the bonus parent and they still try to play one parent against the other. Well, uh, but see, that, that playing one parent against another 
happens in traditional families. You know, if, 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 if a, a child goes to whoever they can get what they want, they, they're, not, they're not necessarily playing. That children do not, in my opinion, mm-hmm. do not think that intricate. What they think about is what they want. And they find the person who can give them what they want. And in the process of that, if that's going to the father and, or going to the mother, they go to get what they want. Um, and so what ends up happening in a blended family, you have a husband and a wife, bonus dad, bonus mom, and end up that the, the children is just going to the person who's favored them to give them what they want. And, it, and, and sometimes that... Uh, if I ask my bonus dad for something, he says no. Then I go to my biological mother. She says yes. I, you know, I, I didn't, I'm not disrespecting my bonus father from the I am, but that's not my intention. Right. My intention is to get what I want. Right. And it just so happened to be disrespectful. But I am not thinking the whole disrespectful piece. I am thinking about I want this for what I want. Gotcha. You know. Okay. Now, and I've, I definitely wanted to talk this next subject, that, um, next subject I thought about. And I've heard, I hear this sometimes, but when it comes to blended families, who should do the, the discipline or the, uh, the physical, well, specifically the physical disciplining, and what, what kind of discipline can the bonus parent do, if any at all? Wow, this is a topic that I really wanted to spend quite a bit of time on. Um, who should do the discipline is... Um, a major, major, major piece. Um, I like to do this, if you don't mind. Uh, um, I think we're coming back next week. Yeah. I, I like to hold that to 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 absolutely to next week. I think you should. I think you should tune in to hear who should do the discipline because if if you get this wrong, mm-hmm. um, this can really destroy your family. And and so I really want you to uh, really listen to what I have to share in that matter. And all right, yeah, definitely. We wanted to make sure that we did bring that up because I know that's been an issue for quite a few uh, parents and, and whatnot in that regard um, because, you know, you never know. I know that's a, that's a hard issue. I understand some people talk about, um, you know, yeah, they would let the bonus parent, you know, do the physical disciplining. Uh, but, again, like, you know, it's, it's a hard subject, you know, to want to, you know, talk about for some people. So what we will do, we will definitely talk about that. Uh, on the on Thursday show uh, as well. Uh, in the meantime, what we are going to do, we're still going to continue with uh, a little bit on and uh, come back with a uh, not just the climax, but somewhat a, a little wrap up or what have you um, in terms of the interview for today's show. Uh, so definitely, you want to definitely stay tuned to Confessions with Brian T. Bethia. And remember, please download the app. On your Android, all right? Download that app on your Android. Again, WJHM102Jams.com for all you Android users, all right? We'll be right back in just a second on WJHM102Jams.com. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you didn't miss me too long. Again, you are listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bethia on WJHM 102 Jams and uh, 102 Jams.com. Forgive me. Got to make sure we get that right. Um, Again, just want to make sure. Download the app if you have an Android. Download the app. You have to type in exactly how I say it, WJHM 102 Jams.com if you have an Android. Again, Apple phone users, iPhone users, I'm sorry. You have to go through your browser. 
You know, speak to your phone company about that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we are back with uh, Pastor Jeffrey Q. Perry, of course, the author and of The Making of a Blended Family. Go ahead and pick that up right now, please, right now. And also the pastor of Christian Family Worship Center. Again, uh, when we left you off, we left you off with the, um, we were talk- going to talk about disciplining of the children, uh, particularly uh, physical, physical discipline of the children when it comes to a blended family. Now, I know that's going to be a hot topic, and some people are just like, no, and the bonus child, the bonus parent is not allowed to touch my child and anything of that nature, but how, would, how do you think is the best way to handle discipline when it comes to a blended family? Wow, this is probably one of the most crucial uh, parts of a blended family is when the child needs to be disciplined. Who should do the discipline in a blended family? I am, um, my experience, my uh, everything that I know, the discipline should be given by the biological parent. The bonus parent can reemphasize uh, and, and support, but the, the, the actual uh, discipline should come from the biological parent. Here's a couple examples, because this is, this is really huge and important. Let's say, for instance, if, if the dishes have to be washed, mm-hmm. and you're the biological parent, and you already have some tension in the house, right. okay? when you go to that child who is not your biological daughter or son, and you say to them, um, wash to go in there and wash the dishes. What is that child gonna say to you? What's the famous line? You ain't my. You, you are <laughs> not my mother. You are not, not my, my father. father. Yeah. Now, what do you have to do? You now have to respond to that, which will escalate into something. I talk about in the book when you respond to that, and you put your hands on another man's child who don't like you anyway. You've just invited. Uh, this is all they've been waiting on, you know. Uh, uh, why, how dare you touch my child? Right. So that's the reason why it can just it can go in so many different bad directions. So what happens is the biological parent says, even if they're work, hey, at eight o'clock I want you to wash the dishes. Now the bonus parent can say these magical words: Didn't your mother say, wash the dishes? Right. Now the directive did not come from you. It came from the biological parent. And when it comes from the biological parent, then the child is apt to do it because they can't argue with their biological mother or father. But whenever you, as a parent, says to them, do something, um, um, then that's where the, 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 the problem comes in. Now, if you're raising this child since the day it was born, mm-hmm. That's a little different. I'm talking about depending on what the age di- age ages are. Right. You're, you're coming into somebody's life when they're seven, eight, nine, you know, teenager. That's a little tough. Oh, that's tough. Yeah. So, you know, and I did not, I did not follow that rule. This is how I learned that rule. I did not follow that rule. I actually disciplined my biological daughter and her father. Uh, who was much bigger than me, (laughs) had a lot more muscles than me, uh, was on his way to New Orleans to confront me, you know. And and I realized from that particular uh, incident that I handled it the wrong way. And it put a wedge in me and my daughter's relationship for many years. And um, um, so you cannot touch or you should not touch my advice as, as a counselor and as a pastor is that you should not uh, uh, put your hands on someone else's child. If, if the child does something, then you got to go to the biological parent. You all discuss it out of their presence, and then you all come back with the united front of what the discipline would be, taking away the phone or, or, or you know, taking away the PlayStation, whatever that is. But, it, but that directive and order should come from the biological parent. Now, I'm glad you said that and explained it that way. Now, I do have another question because I know there are certain instances where the one or maybe both of the biological parents give the okay for the bonus parent to discipline, give physical discipline, a spanking for uh, like a or whooping in our terms. Um, is it, do you still feel it's okay in that regard if the biological parents say it's okay for you to whip my child? No. No, 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 and no again. Here's why. 
when you're trying to win over your uh, uh, um, family, your, your blended family, your bonus children have given you rented space in their heart. Rented space. You don't have ownership. They rented you some space. When you treat them or discipline them, they will evict you out of their heart, even though they have to respect you. I never forget um, 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 my daughter uh, who said to my, her mother when I disciplined her, she looked at her mother, and it, 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 it was a knife to my heart. She looked at my mother and said, you chose him, not me. That's not who I wanted in my life. That's who you wanted in your life. And from that moment, I was evicted from my daughter's heart. And guess when I was evicted from my daughter's heart, then I also lost a little of my wife's heart because you cannot not love someone's children or child and expect them to maintain love for you. So it, it, it's just a bad thing to do. It's a, it, it, it can go so many different ways. So why not? just allow the biological parent to handle it and you step in and support the biological parent so that you can continue to, to main a owner in that child's heart. You don't want to be evicted out of the heart. It, it, it destroys the blended family. And most people, you know, you can't come with this, with this syndrome, I'm the man of the house and what I say go, and, eh, that, that, that does not work very well in a blended family. Again, they can't go anywhere, they're children, but they will evict you out of their heart. And when they get older, you will not have the kind of relationship that you desire to have with them. Okay. Now, in regards for people... My opinion. <laughs> my, I wanted to throw that in there. My opinion. Now, in regards for, let's say, like, for, for those people who have already gone through or are going, currently already going through that situation right now, mm -hmm. you know, how, did you, how were you able to enter back into her heart um, as her, like another um, her father figure, and how long did that take you? Wow, she actually writes the foreword in my book, um, 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 and 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 in the foreword in my book, uh, it says suddenly in I, I got to read this. Only it's only a paragraph. It's only a paragraph, uh, but this is worth reading. It said suddenly in the summer of 1993. We were a blended family. Jerry Q. Perry's moved in, and Jason and Justin were coming up for the summer. We had just left my childhood home and moved into a three-bedroom apartment in another city. Away from my friends, parents, we were getting a divorce, and bam, now I have a, a two brothers and a new dad. Forming that into a sentence today pretty much sums up my attitude about the whole thing. I was angry, confused, and shocked. And I showed it towards my new family. I spent about seven years being mean and hateful, seven years of being disrespectful. But despite all of that, you always loved me. You were always kind and still took my, and still took my hateful self on vacation. This blended family was, wasn't by far easy, and it took over ten years for me to claim you as my father and to love you as such. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of patience, time, and love to win back a child whose heart you have broken. Now, in, in, in regards for that. And you need to be able to, and you need to do the work. Absolutely. You need to do Absolutely. the work. You, you need to do the work. Do not look at a child and say, oh, that's a child. You do what you got. You need to do the work. They deserve the work that, uh, because you have invaded their lives. Right. And they in, uh, deserve the work. And was that just as long to repair the relationship you had with her father as well after that particular incident? No, it didn't take as long to uh, uh, repair that um, because his, in the instance of that, his family came to my rescue because uh, the incident they felt at that moment that uh, my daughter uh, might not have been in the right in this particular right. instance. Right. And so his mother and his sisters all rallied around and made, made it a little bit, hey, let's look at this. You know, this was out of line kind of thing. 
um, um, but I learned from it. In fact, that his, his mother, his mother even now calls me one of her sons and his sisters uh, uh, treat me as a brother. And, and, but it took work. It took a lot of work and, and, and a lot of work on all of our parts. So I, I can't say that I'm the angel right. that, you know, it was his love for his children to make sure that he showed peace towards me as well. Wow. I mean, that is, that is a tough situation. I know some of y'all listening or maybe watching right now can you know, probably saying like, that is not possible, not, uh, not in my situation or what have you. Um, I've had this conversation before with other people and, you know, in terms of uh, making sure that the both sides of the family, all sides of the family kind of get along. And to a lot of people, it looks like that's not possible. You know, in, in that regard. So it, they may look at your situation and think like, oh, that's an anomaly. That never, you know, that stuff never happens, you know, or whatever. But that's why I want to say you definitely got to get the book. Yeah. You know, <laughs> to find well, out. It, it, it happens, but it happens with a lot of forgiveness. You, you have to have a lot of forgiveness. You have to have a lot of love. And, and it takes, for me, um, um, by the way, that my, my, uh, uh, my children's father is not a, um, um, I would say, a practicing Christian. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to be able to love people mm -hmm. beyond um, where they are. And um, that I think that was the, the, the force behind what changed it for us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so much so, um, you know, it's, it's just a wonderful thing um, that, you know, that she was able to at least recognize that. And, was, you know, how, first of all, how does she how does she come to write the foreword to the book? And how did that all come together? Um. I, I just asked, I, I think I asked her and all of my children to. I think she was the only one that stepped up to the plate to do it. <laughs> um, um, and, and just, I tell you what really changed it. She had a, she had a baby at, uh, early in, 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 in her college years. Mm -hmm. and, and me and her son just kind of bonded. And I, and I really think the way that she saw that I loved her son made her endear to me. Gotcha. Um, and um, you, you know, you know him. Uh, yeah. That's my boy. And uh, um, he's older now, and he's hard headed like all the rest of the children. But when he was a baby, that was my. I used to call him Buddha Woodles. That was my guy. <laughs> and she saw the love that I had for him, and I think it endeared her heart to me. All right. Well, you hear it there. We'll be right back on WJHM one hundred two Jams dot com on the radio. All right. We'll be back, y'all, in just one second. Peace. Welcome back, y'all. Again, you are listening and or watching to WJHM 102jams.com. Uh, of course, this is Confessions with Brian T. Bethea. Again, we're back with my special guest, Pastor Jerry Q. Perrys. Uh, of course, again, the author of The Making of a Blended Family and pastor of um, Christian Family Worship Center. And uh, again, we are glad to have him back. And we just got through with the topic. Uh, we're just finishing up the topic of disciplining uh, the children and stuff like that when it comes to the making of a blended family. Uh, one thing I definitely wanted to get with in terms of family events and gatherings, like how do yeah. you decide where do you go for Christmas, where are you going for Thanksgiving, and all of that? Well, it's not only, it's not only uh, family gatherings for Christmas, Thanksgiving, but it's graduations. Mm -hmm. it's, it's whatever the event may be. Um, one of the things that, that, that I did when we were, when I had my blended family, when, we were, when they were younger, um, um, my son was playing hockey and his dad again was very close to his family. And so he would come over, um, and, and we started off where he would be sitting on one side of the ring and we would be sitting on the other side of the ring. Um, but when the child finished playing hockey, he wanted his mother and father to congratulate him, you mm -hmm. know? So what I ended up doing is I bought a video camera, 
and I start videoing to be a part of the event, but kind of having a, a stand back and allowing the child the opportunity to shine in front of his mother and father. And so when our kids had graduations and they had those different particular things, uh, I would be the videographer. And, and, and I would allow the mother and father to be the people that was up close. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes down to Thanksgiving, and I talked about this in the last show, Christmas, you know, uh, their father came over to open up Christmas gifts with, their chil with his children because they were very young. They were five and six or seven, you know. And so he would open up Christmas gifts with them. And so that was wonderful. And then we started uh, having our own traditions and different things that we start doing within ourselves. And then, of course, we moved to New Orleans, and so the kids would spend Christmas with their father in Cleveland or sit, sit, uh, spend Thanksgiving. And so we end up splitting the kids because we became in two different cities, which made it a little bit easier uh, that we were not in the same city. Okay. Now, I know in, in sometimes you have issues where, uh, like I know like for me specifically, you know, um, I'm split between, you know, where I, sometimes where I might feel like, well, you got this family function here and then maybe this family function uh, here. Now, in terms of, um, is there like a schedule that you learn how to work out specifically in regards to that? Like when it comes to like family function, not just Christmas or Thanksgiving, but maybe like family dinners, you know, is it okay, let's say like for instance, if, um, if uh, you know, one of your sons is maybe like, you know, if his, if his ex-wife or what have you was still very, very close with the family, is it okay for like her to come around? And, you know, if, that's, if that was like, you know, they're, they're, if they had a common child specifically, together is that okay for them yeah well? in, in in our family in our family if you are part of our family you are part of our family so um um especially if you have a child so for an example um, um of course you know that we experience this that that uh, uh a child is born and that those parents divorce and then another person come into that life then the biological parents are welcome in our home to be a part of their son's life dinner and all of the above. Right. Because again, here's the thing about this. When, when you look at children do not deserve the drama that we have with our own insecurities to say, I'm not coming if he's coming over. Or I'm not coming if she's coming over. That's your insecurity. The children did not ask for that. They, you brought them into the world. The person that you brought them into the world. Now, I'm not talking about somebody, by, by the way, that's abusive and, you know, right. crazy, you know, right. crazy and abusive. They don't need to be around you at all. But I'm talking about somebody who loves this child, lo but you guys didn't get along together. The child should not be punished for the fact that your new boyfriend or new girlfriend is insecure. Um, um, that's a, that might be a bad sign that that may not be the person that you need to be with. Right. So, so uh, we open up the door for people to come and spend time with the blended family because that's what we are. We are a blended family. And I use the analogy of this. Let's say, for instance, you, you marry a young lady and she doesn't want you to go. And I write about this in the book. She mm -hmm. doesn't want you to go visit your child. And so you end up having a child with her and something happens to that relationship. Is, is it fair for the new woman that you get to say to her, I don't want you go visiting your child? How would she feel about that? Right. And if you were a bad, if you agree to that, to not visit your son because of a woman's insecurity, then that woman must need to know that she is marrying a guy who is not man enough to man up to his responsibilities. Wow. And that is something that, but because we love them and we want them, we overlook that red flag. Right. If you can forsake your son or your daughter for another person, you are not the kind of person that need to be married to anybody. Mm, I like that. My opinion, <laughs> take it, leave it. Children are important. They deserve their parents, and they deserve to have you in their lives. Exactly. Now, I want to get into the front cover of the book, because I know on the front cover, uh, it looks like, of course, like the Brady Bunch. Yes. Uh, but specifically, you have a black family on one side and a white family um, on the other. 
Uh, now, in terms of, I uh, just want to make sure that we clarify with people, that's not what he meant by uh, the making of a blended family in terms of, like, race. It's the whole dynamic that we've been talking about yes. um, in that regard. So, but can you talk about why you specifically chose, like, this particular outlook of the cover? And then um, how, how do you deal with, you know, the blended families when there are two races and or two ethnic cultures involved? Um. First of all, how did I choose the cover? I, cho I chose the cover because it looks like the Brady Bunch, and mm -hmm. I wanted to send the message that it was that kind of family, the Brady Bunch. Uh, right. My graphic designer actually hooked up the different cultures and, and right. families there. <laughs> um, when it comes to different cultures and, and, and blended races, um, that is, at this moment, I am I'm researching that for my new book. Mm -hmm. um, but I can I can truly say that uh, whether you if you are an American and you marry somebody from Jamaica, uh, a different culture or or British, um, um, you have to find out. Uh, that's a whole nother dynamic right. there, you know, um, um, because uh, some countries men are dominant, you know, and then when you come in America where you have a lot of liberal women um, uh, kind of doing their doing their thing that may not mix real well with with an African brother you know and I'm not saying that I, again I'm researching so I'm, I'm really not as versed to talk about that today as I am about blended gotcha. families gotcha okay but I do know that is something that needs to be uh and needs to be talked about because I know absolutely well, well we can kind of delve away from that but still kind of I guess keep with that in a way but not you know you don't have to go too much in debt in debt Let's let's break that down then in terms of because really, um, a family is a culture no matter if you know basically like a culture within a culture if you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So like like I know you know you can be you and your mate can be of the same race and same ethnicity, but because you were raised in the way you were raised in your home can be like part of your I guess household culture. Absolutely. So how do you determine it's like it's. I know there's couples out there that are having troubles in terms of like who handles what responsibilities um, in that regard, such as who and like pays the bills or who pays um, who pays which bill I should say, or who handles the cleaning or cooking responsibilities. You know, how do you, how do you and Mama specifically specifically how do you break down in terms of or you know how do you communicate who does what responsibility and what you're responsible. Well, there's two ways to approach that. The first way to approach it is before you get married, you discuss all of this in premarital counseling. Um, that's the best way so that you'll know who's cooking what, you know, what, uh, uh, who's paying what. Is it going to be a separate account or two different accounts? Uh, are you going to pool your money together? You know, uh, you're not going to pool, pool your money together. Uh, um, uh, if both parties is, are working, uh, are you sharing in the housing responsibility? Or is uh, if if the if the wife is is a homemaker and the husband is working, is she cooking dinner? Um, um, so uh, I mean, there's a variety of things that you got to talk through, and 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 that is based upon individual couples how they work best. Because in my family, I do 95% of the cooking, because my wife doesn't like to cook. I love to cook. You know, I like to cook and. And, and I cook pretty well, so he's good at it, y'all. I gotta yeah, say, yeah. I gotta say it myself. Yeah. So, so I enjoy cooking. So, if I'm waiting on my wife to cook a meal, that may not be coming anytime soon. <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean that that's everybody's marriage or everybody's right. way of doing things. That's just how we how we operate in our house. Okay. Now I notice um, a lot of stuff or a lot of things. One thing specifically that doesn't get talked about. Uh, but I know our church actually talks about it because I know it's part of a um, part of marriage and helping to keep marriage together. Uh, why is it that you feel, or do you feel? Actually, it's more of a question on my part. I don't feel a lot of um, churches really delve into the subject of sex with their marital partner. Uh, is there a particular reason why you feel that way, and or not? I'm sorry, you not you don't feel that way. But is there a particular reason why it seems that way? That a lot of people don't maybe talk about that, or do they, is that something that they think should be handled more so in private? Well, I, I, I can't speak for, you know, how they feel. I do think that sex is still a taboo subject um, from the church perspective, even though everybody's doing it, <laughs> you know, um, and none of us get here without it. Um, 
and it's all through the Bible, sexuality. You know, um, I just think it's 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 a, a, a subject that um, makes makes us all uncomfortable right. uh, to have. And so, um, I oftentimes talk about it that it, uh, women need security, men need sex. Me, men need sex like fish need water. Right. You know, um, and and so. Uh, can a fish live without water? Uh, no. Uh, it, it, a marriage can't survive without a man making love to his wife. I right. mean, that's how he feels loved. A woman feels loved by uh, a man taking care of his responsibility and making her feel secure. You know, so uh, those things need to be talked about. Um, um, but that's that's not a blended family issue. That's a, a human issue. Yeah. And, uh and so it's 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 something that should be really discussed in premarital counseling. Right. And I mean, the only reason why I did bring that up is because I know that's one of the reasons why marriages are being torn apart, and then hence, you know, hence people end up having to make a blended family. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely wanted to make sure, you know, that I wanted that, you know, ask that question in regards to that. And the other thing is is finances, and um, you know, what what are some things that you or some pointers that you think you, you can give people or marital, marriage couples, or couples in general, about how to handle their finances when it comes to marriage? Well, um, one of the things is that yeah, you, you have to get a budget, and you, and you have to talk about where the money is going. Um, when it comes to marriages, when you have two people working, sometimes when they receive their paycheck, you know, and they feel like it's their paycheck, um, it makes it very difficult for a family to function. In this day and time, you almost need two, three, four incomes to make a marriage work, right. you know. And so uh, you need somebody that understands that they are your life partner and your helper. Um, um, when when God uh, made Eve for Adam, he says, I'm going to make you a help meet, uh, not a separate meet, you know. Right. And so uh, you need somebody to uh, walk with you and walk with you and, and, and strengthen you where you're weak in what areas. And sometimes finances, you got to find out between the two of you all who could save better, who could who could uh, budget better and 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 work with your spouse uh to do that and not uh because if you work separately it's going to ultimately hurt the family you got to work together to make that happen now is it okay for for a couple to have strictly two separate bank accounts or should they have at least two separate bank accounts for themselves and then maybe a joint account to handle uh like responsibilities such as the bills and maybe the mortgage and stuff like that well, again, it's it's no one way to do it. it it's what works for your family. Um, here's what I do know: if you got one bank account, uh, one of the greater ways to do it is to is to have a money set aside, and I think in an account for the family, and then everybody get an allowance. And if they spend their allowance the way they want, but they can't dip back into the operation fund of a house, gotcha. you know that that works well with me. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so once again, y'all, what we were going to do, of course, we got some bills to pay. Uh, but again, before we go on break, download the app, WJHM102Jams.com on your Android phone if you have an Android. Again, if you have an Apple phone, you are out of luck. Uh, so definitely you got to go through your web browser. But again, we will be right back with Pastor Jerry Q. Perry's on WJHM102Jams.com. We'll be back in just a minute, y'all.
again, thank you all for staying tuned to listen to Confessions with Brian T. Bethea on WJHM102Jams.com. Uh, again, just want to reiterate, download the app if you have an Android. Download the app. Go to WJHM102Jams.com and on, your, uh, on your Play Store and download the app. Uh, from there, and again, sorry for all my iPhone users. This is the one time where Android users get to be bougie, you know what I'm saying, and say you have to go use your web browser. You cannot use uh, your Play Store. Uh, so definitely, you want to go ahead and make sure that you do that. Uh, and if you want to download the app, if you have an iPhone, listen, go to Apple or whoever is in charge of the iPhone and tell them, look, do what you have to do to get us on the app or, or what have you. So we're back right now with Pastor Jerry Q. Parries, who is, again, the author of The Making of a Blended Family. I suggest you get a copy of, your, um, of this man's book. He's also the pastor, again, of, of a Christian Family Worship Center. Of course, if you want to follow us online, go to cfwcorlando.com. Uh, you can also find that on Instagram at the same, um, at CFWC Orlando as well on Instagram. Now, getting back to um, The Making of the Blended Family, let's talk about yeah. family crisis. You know, how do you handle when there's like a, a family uh, emergency or family crisis, you know, in, you know, in any situation, particularly if a kid has to go to the hospital or. Yeah, that's that good. That's, that's good. Um, um, family crisis, are, uh, again, uh, blended families, you got to have your, uh, you have to have, be secure. And, and, and it's very important that you pick the right person uh, to, to, to join in a blended family with. Mm -hmm. um, we had an incident to where my son um, uh, was in London and he had gotten sick. Um, and um, of course, at first when he's, getting, he's gotten sick over in London, England, he's in school. Mm -hmm. um, of course, guess who he wants to see? His mother mm -hmm. and his father. Mm -hmm. You know, because, I mean, he doesn't know what's going on. He's, 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 he's uh, anxious about what's happening. And so um, um, we didn't have enough money uh, for all of us to fly over instantly to London, England. So right. what do you do? Right. So uh, the, my wife's son is in need of her. So I can say to my wife, you can't go. I'm not going. You're not going. You know, what how crazy is that? Her, right. her son is over there in the hospital. So um, my wife flew over, and then her ex-husband flew over uh, to be with their son. And you have to be secure enough to allow that to happen and, and, and your wife and husband, or whoever that may be, have to be honest enough, person of integrity, to, 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 to allow that to happen right. so that they can attend to their child. So when he got back to uh, uh, Cleveland uh, uh, and they went to take him to uh, uh, the hospital because they brought him back, and, and to make a long story short, he, uh, he was in, uh, getting some work done uh, you know, in the surgery. And so after surgery was over, um, we're all sitting out in the waiting room, you know, waiting for the answer. I'm there to support my wife. His father's there to support her, his son. His father's uh, wife is there to support her husband. So all four of us are there. Right. So, but here's the issue. This is interesting. The doctor comes out and says, hey, only I, uh, uh, if you want to go back to seeing the biological, I mean, he didn't say the biological parent. The parents is the, the people that can go back. Right. Was well, my son, her son, uh, his son, and. <laughs> you know, but the biological parents stood up and they went back together. And and so I'm sitting out in the waiting room with his uh, wife to be well, his wife now. Mm -hmm. And of course, we all we all have because we've built this relationship. Right. We have this relationship. But my point is, during crisis, the ch the child wants to see his parents. And, and you can't be out in the in the waiting room arguing back and forth. Uh, you ain't going back there with him. You ain't, you know, uh, you, you got to put all of that aside, even at funerals. Right. Uh, aunt, uh, aunt, aunt was passing. Aunt, aunt was passing, and, the, and the, uh, my wife's uh, ex-husband, my children's father, had lived above her aunt for over eight years. And when she passed, he has a relationship with this woman. You know, of course he's going to come to the funeral. Of course he's going to come... And, and I have to give them room as a family to grieve their aunt but be there as support. And so it's a lot of, uh, you got to be secure when you are in a blended family. You cannot be insecure. You got to be secure and support the children through those traumas and not trip out. 
or give a lot of drama. Nobody needs drama at a funeral or, <laughs> right. or, or at, at a hospital when, when somebody is, is, is terribly ill. You have to, to put on your best behavior. And, 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 and so I teach in the book how to go through crisis and, and when to back up and, and, and how to step forward and, and all of that good stuff. Now, is, is, there any, is there any time where a situation may arise where the bonus parent can have a say-so in terms of like a, 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 a crisis like that, you know, in case that the child is in the hospital and, or needs, you know, uh, specific medical care? Do you think there's ever a situation where it's like, okay, for a, um, not necessarily for a decision to be made, but in case, you know, some type of, you know, well, in case, in case a decision needs to be made, or, you know, what is the best avenue for care for that particular child? You know, is, can they, should they be consulted in, in that regard as well? Well, if the relationship have been built from the beginning, then it will be right. some, some uh, conversation. Uh, nobody's, I wasn't ignored. In fact, after he went back and saw the child, he, he came out and came directly to me, the, uh, his father, mm -hmm. and said, hey, it's your turn to go back and, and, and visit, you know. So he came and got me. Wow. So, so it, 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 he wanted to make sure that, that I felt a part of the process. Um, um, yes, there, there, uh, if, if, if you build the relationship, it takes time. This is not overnight. Mm -hmm. If you build that relationship, people would want to know what's your thought on it, and they will value that opinion. But if you are um, an egghead, I would want to <laughs> say something else. Uh, but if you are an egghead, right. then, then, of course, you're not going to have any say so right. because uh, nobody's going to want to listen to what you have to say because they will see it out of drama and not out of concern. Right. Yeah. Now, in regards for uh, divorce, and, and God forbid anybody listening right now, um, God forbid unless you are in a situation where you feel like your life is in danger, you know, if there's any way for you to save your marriage, you know, please try to find a way to do so. Please do. Please um, do. But in case there, uh, in case there is no other way out of it. How is a parent, what's the best way you feel like a parent should explain to their child, look, your, your mother or your father or you know, the other parent is, you know, you're getting a divorce. What's the best way to explain that to a child? That is, that is a, a, a devastating, devastating thing. Um, please, uh, those that are listening, please don't take that lightly. Um, I think that you have to be honest with the child um, that what is going on and I would suggest that you seek counseling with that child. Um, um, my story, I had a son, my, my youngest son, my youngest son, um, um, was in school. He was getting A's and B's. Well, he, was in, he was like in second, third grade. He was getting S's and E's, or S's and E's. And um, my wife and I got a divorce, and, and he moved to Memphis. And I went to Memphis and uh, went to check on him at school because he was not having good days at school and I looked at his report card and he got straight F's straight F's for the next three quarters now if you're not if you're not I, I wasn't smart enough now that I needed to get him counseling immediately mm -hmm. you know um, if you're not if, if, you, if you're not in tune to what's going on first thing you know some of us want to do is pull out a belt you know, right. he doesn't need a belt. He needs counseling. He is traumatized from the divorce of what happened to his family. And, and, and while other kids are in there trying to study and read, his mind is in that he just lost his father. He just lost his mother. He just lost his home. He just lost his security. The, the, it, the, the whole bottom of his life just fell out. And, 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 and that child is there suffering through this horrible divorce and 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 you're going on picking up a new mate and acting like it's his fault that he's going through this drama and 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 so those crises and those things um uh, you got it when you're going through a divorce with your children i believe that constantly needs to be set up immediately so that they can be able to express themselves of what they are going through because ultimately <clears throat> I don't think that my son ever poured out as well as he could have. Right. 
because I did not get him the help necessary during a trauma situation. And the effects of that, to me, still lingers today. Okay. And I want to add to that, because I know there was advice that you specifically gave me um, in terms of what, when I started dating uh, my girlfriend or what have you, uh, is not to introduce my son oh, to yes. her until I felt like, you know, she was going to be my one. And I know, I remember you gave me a specific time frame, which I believe was about, was it three to six months or something like that in that regard? Well, probably you know? over a year, because I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate for a year to, okay. to, to, mm -hmm. to, and, and, and let me, if I may speak on that, yeah, 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 yeah. that, that um, when you are, when you uh, come out of divorce and you meet somebody else, new Johnny, um, it is not wise to take your, your girlfriend or boyfriend around your children. Um, it is, in fact, in my opinion, that you should, first of all, again, like we talked about in last week's program, mm -hmm. that you need to wait at least a year to two years before you seriously think about getting married again. Right. You know, um, if you wait two to three years to make sure that you are going to get married again, then you do not introduce your children to people until you know that that is the person that you want to marry. Because children trust and they get attached to people. And once they get attached to those people and you break off with them again, they go through another loss. They go through, you You date somebody, and you know how people, when they first come in your life, they want to make an impression on your kids. They right. go get them ice cream, and they, <laughs> and they take them to the park, and they, they miss the this and miss the that. Then you all fall out, and then that kid is waiting on that person to come to pick up to have some more fun with, and they're no longer in their lives. They, they, their heart is broken again. Right. And so you do not involve your kids in your marital situations after a divorce until you know that person is going to be permanently into your life. Then you introduce them from that point on. My opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that's very uh, important for those people that are listening. So, again, uh, we are going to have more. We'll be right back with Pastor Jerry Q. Perry's on WJHM102Jam.com. Peace. Again, you're listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bethea on WJHM102Jams.com. Just a brief recap of that we've been talking about the making of a blended family uh, by author uh, Pastor Jerry Q. Parries, who, again, is also the pastor of Christian Family Worship Center. I know you wanted to add something briefly real quick in regards to grandparents. Can you touch on that for just a second? Yeah, grandparents. I write in the book that uh, when you blend a family together, um, you agree to take on everything attached to that person, children, all of the above. However, grandparents do not have to take on that responsibility right. because grandparents did not ask for you to choose whoever you chose. Right. So they have a right if you got uh, five or six different children from different families or whatever, three or four, they have a right to go to their grandchild only Right. And do for that grandchild right. without having to feel the pressure that if they can't take their grandchild, they have to take all the grandchildren. And some people try to uh, use their grandchildren as a pawn, a pawn right. to say, um, um, if you don't buy for one, you buy for one, you got to buy for all. Right. That's, that, that is not the way that should go. 
uh, grandparents have a choice. They have a choice about their own biological grandchildren. <laughs> and it, it, you know, so you know they have a choice about their uh, 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 bonus children. So I just want you to know, and we'll talk more about that if we ever get a chance to do so, uh, about the responsibility and, uh, for grandparents. Um, do not hold your children from your grandparents. That's a cruel thing. That's a cruel thing to do simply because you want to manipulate the situation. Uh, if you don't pay, then they can't come and see you. You know, don't do that. That's that's not right. And there's a situation like that in the book. That's yes, why you have to write, read the book. So read definitely. the book. And, and by the way, uh, uh, Brian Bethia, you do an incredible job oh, thank you, uh, on your radio station. And I am telling you, I'm very proud of this young man and very proud of what he's doing. And I'm very happy that he invited me. I loved it. Uh, this has been awesome. Thank you, brother. Absolutely, absolutely. So what we are going to do, we are going to bring him back. We're going to ask you if you can come back. and Because uh, we, we were really just getting started. It's probably going to be about a four-parter, uh, four <laughs> or five-parter. So uh, can you give out, again, your social media? Yeah, you can reach me at my email at Pastor Jerry Q. Perries, P-A-R-R-I-E-S at gmail.com. Or for our church website, you can go to cfwcorlando.com. This book is available at Zulon Press, or you can email me, come to the church website. Uh, but you is at Zulon Press, or you can get it at Amazon. Amazon uh, is a great place also to pick it up. And again, you can follow me as well on uh, Instagram, the Phoenix 516 at, at Instagram, as well as Brian T. Bethia Confessions on Facebook. And, of course... Uh, we also have Writer's Block every Saturday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at TNT Cafe. So, again, thank you all for listening to WJHM102Jams.com. This is Confessions with Brian T. Bethea. We will see you again next week, y'all. Peace.